Hello, and welcome to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. It's IAE, Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. And it's day two. I can just feel the excitement welling up inside me. We've all been here before, so I'm going to just give you a very brief overview of today's show. So, you're looking at Arena. She is my second alt. Like I said yesterday, there is a Cosmic Cat, which is my first alt, and Batgirl, which is my main. I use Arena for most of the videos because it's easier for me to do it with less ships because I don't have to worry about how long it takes to pick what I have. Anyway, after yesterday's debacle of multiple people dying at the expo because their helmets were left on, it seems that bug is somehow corrected itself, or maybe just because I didn't wear my helmet, I didn't see it happening to me, and I didn't see the countless numbers of dead bodies littered all over the floor that I did yesterday. Also the bug when you try on outfits where you get stuck in the try-on screen seemed to have been gone for me today. Hopefully the server issues aren't dealing too much damage to your enjoyment. I really wanted to attempt to take out one of the ships from this show and show you how it works, one of my favorites, but the trains on the way over here were desyncing so bad they were above the ground, deep under the world, and halfway over on the side of New Babbage and back. It was absolutely nuts. I decided not to do that. I think a lot of my reviews are going to come a couple weeks after when the free fly is over. And that's mainly because it's very difficult to actually show things. Uh, give you, for instance, I was just trying to get in my carrick to look at all the changes that have happened. They enabled the cargo bit pods. And the front ramp got stuck in a loop because of desync, and I kept falling through it to the point where I was like less than 20% hit points left. And I just said, you know what, I'm not going to be doing that video for later on tomorrow. So we'll worry about all this in a couple of weeks. But until then, we'll just do videos like this. So as we make our way over to the main floor, I want all the newcomers to remember that there are kiosks here that sell food and water and don't let yourself die of something as easy as being able to walk over and buy a burrito and water. All right, so the main floor is dominated by the massive presence of the Reclaimer. It is the pinnacle, the top end ship of the salvaging job. And I'm walking over to get myself a burrito because they're just oh so good. And uh, I did eat one on the train and stacked a water, a burrito, and a can of soda on top of each other somehow in a perfect tower. But needless to say, I'm just going to go through the motions here. And then we'll turn back around and look at what's on the floor here. I'm not going to give you a full tour of each one of the ships because I really don't want to take that away from you newbies that are joining the game. Welcome, and I hope you love the game. Look in the description below for a referral code if you want to get 5,000 UEC and potentially get some other goodies throughout the show. All right, so salvage. That's the big thing here. You start off in something like a vulture and you move up to here. There's no in between. It's just really low end or ultra high end. And I'm sure that will be filled out over time. Salvage is fun. Salvage is profitable. Salvage is a job loop that you can do in the game right now, and it's semi-worked out and hopefully gets a lot more love. But really what Aegis is about is military ship, and they have some really good ones here today. There are multiple versions of the Sabre. Now, the Sabre has had a limited version called the Raven, which is an EMP burst fighter craft that will knock out your shields and systems and then take you out with its guns. But this one over here is something from what they call Masters of Air. This is the comet and all it is is a regular saber with a special skin and a different set of weapons. They do these a lot, okay? So there's a Valiant for the... Uh, it, there, there's just a number of these. I think there's a Firebird, a 
Peregrine. Then for the Gladius, there's a... Yeah, the Gladius has that Valiant. So all I can say is Saber is an amazing ship. I don't know if it's the meta anymore. I've been away for a while, but it is beautiful. And if you are into the bounty hunter slash mercenary job line, which honestly is kind of in its starting progression, but it still needs a little bit of work, or I should say a lot of work, this is a good ship for you to get. But I still recommend the Pinnacle of Fighters, which we will see at another time. Let's go into one of the other hall. And as we walk into this next hall, we have two of the most beloved ships in the Aegis lineup, and they are the Avenger and the Redeemer. So the Avenger has three different models. It has the Titan, which is one of the best starter ships in the game. It has the Warlock, which is another one of those EMP ships like the Raven that just makes a microburst of EMP, knocks out shields and systems, and then you could take them on, take them out. And then you have the Stalker, a bounty hunter ship. Now, this ship used to be an interceptor. It's really fast. It packs a powerful punch, especially with the cannon in the front. And it's kind of funny that it has that Gatling gun in the front because the Avenger is the name of the gun in the A-10 Warthog. That's just a little bit of trivia if you wanted it. The, this ship needs a little bit of love. It's one of the first ships we received way back when in 2013, 2014. And you can tell by the textures and non-working equipment and some other things that have been put into newer ships, except for there's the fire, right? The fire extinguisher is there. This ship needs a gold pass. But I love flying my Avenger. I think it's beautiful. Some of the paints that they have for it make it look way better than the white and black penguin look. But this is a ship that if you're just coming into the game, you should consider. Remember, the way I look at it is, I'm never going to tell you what ship to buy, but I'm going to tell you the ships that I love the most. Remember, opinions are only right for the person that has them. Okay. Something special about the Avenger, and it comes from you not being able to access the ramp and the cargo bay in the beginning from the cockpit, is that it has two entrances, through the cockpit and through the rear. So this one over here, I believe, is going to be the Stalker because it has a Sucker Punch cannons. Sucker Punch takes out shields and systems. And if they try to get away, you could pick off like engines and different parts with this beautifully modeled, amazingly awesome cannon right in the nose. Now, the Stalker also has some really old looking, and I wonder if they still work, pods that you stick your bounties in. Now, I don't know who's going to go out and get this many bounties <laughs> in one run alone. I mean, I, I don't know if you're going to survive that, but it was a really good concept when it came out about 10 years ago, nine years ago, and it still holds a little bit of truth today that you can use it, but I think most bounties are just killed at this point. I don't see anyone bringing them anywhere or know if that even exists in the game yet. Now, this is the Warlock. The Warlock is the one I was talking about before that has the EMP in it. And essentially, you, you just put off an EMP burst, stop whatever ship you're pursuing in its tracks, and it takes out their systems. It also takes out your shields, but it gives you an opportunity to disable them. And maybe somebody in the Stalker comes through then and helps you get the bounty. But this is a great ship to have in a group of fighters or other, other starships, and uh, you could wreak some havoc with it. And mind you that when you do set off the EMP and it hits friendly vessels, you will get a crime rating. Now, I'm not sure if that's still the case, but it's happened to me many times flying the ship. The next Avenger we see is another one of the Masters of Air configurations. This one is the Renegade, and Masters of Air has something to do with Arena Commander. I'm going to say this over and over again. It's just different configurations of the Aegis ships. I think there might be some others that we see later on in the show. But this is just one that one of the most famous pilots in the UEE Navy flew, and it's the configuration that they used in battle. It's nice. Sometimes you see it on sale. I love the color. It's not that black and white of the advocacy. It's pretty cool. 
Now we move on to the centerpiece of this haul, and it's the Redeemer. The Redeemer is a dropship, gunship, whatever you want to call it, but these days it's a gunship. It is hugely powerful. And originally, this was part of the next great starship contest way, way, way back. And although I have one of these and I enjoy flying it so much, I really still think Infinite Shoe Monkey should have won. These nutcracker engines just turn me off, but the power of this ship is more than enough to make up for some people's dislike of the aesthetics. This is a powerful, powerful ship, but it, it lacks in the ability to carry cargo. It only has two SCU, I believe, maybe four, but it supports its crew, mostly of a pilot and a bunch of gunners. And I, I think this needs to be the mainstay of any landing force. It is just such a powerful ship, has so many guns, and it's so fun to play when you have friends and you can fill every single one of the roles on board. Now, this is another ship that's pretty amazing. It went through a gold pass. It went through a, re a total rebuild because the people in the next great starship contest didn't have any clue what was going to happen 10 years later in the game, nor did CIG. So they needed to have a lot of changes to it. Now, this area is just a waste of space to me. They could have done something else in here. It is a component area, an engineering area. So maybe I'm absolutely wrong, but it just, it's so much space that could be used for something else. And I don't know. I, I, I guess the components are so big in this ship, and they need to be because it's a gunship, that they needed to have that much space to put all the components. Now, I'm going to get out of here real fast because, again, I want you to be able to come here, rent the ship, take it out for a flight, and I'll do a separate, a separate video on the different ships that I like the most, and that'll come later on when I have a little bit more time off. In this last haul, before we go down to the hollow viewers, we have, yes, indeed, the Gladius, one of, if not the best, one of the best light fighters. And we have another Masters of Air version on the other side, but the Gladius is one of the most fun ships that I fly. This and the Arrow. And I have an extremely hard time telling people which one I like most. And we'll see the Arrow later on down the road in IAE at the Anvil Aerospace Day. But this one I want you to look at because it was one of the first ships that I just absolutely fell in love with. And I've taken this into Arena Commander when you used to be able to do it solo and completed it many times. This is a great looking ship. It flies well. You can put a lot of different weapons on it to give you different damage types. And it's just amazing. And the one on the other side of the hall that we're going to get to, I'll talk to just a little bit more because I do own that one and it was because of the story. So let's move on. I like that cannon, don't you? <laughs> and the missiles. Oh, wow. That quantum drive. Wow. This, this pod underneath just gives it such a, such a unique look. I love it. So I have to say you haven't experienced an amazingly fun time until you've had a full complement of people inside of a hammerhead. The Hammerhead is most like an anti-aircraft destroyer slash frigate from World War II. It is bustling with guns everywhere. There are four covering the flanks, one covering the top, and one covering the rear. This thing is loaded to bear. My friends and I have taken this out a few times in claim jumper missions, and that was years ago, and it was just absolutely incredible. And I could only imagine. How incredibly amazing this ship is going to be when orgs start setting up battles against each other. This is a fun ship. It has a lot of, well, stick to itiveness. We could say the tenacity in this vessel is not unparalleled, but at the very high end. We have to see how armor and shields start fleshing out over time. Now that you are going to be firing on something to destroy different systems and 
different weapons and take the ship into a dormant state instead of a fighting state. So no more booms and explosions when you're taking out ships. The explosions will come far after you disable them. Now this is the Valiant. It was flown by a female pilot who had the first Vandal kill. It's pretty amazing, and I have to say the weaponry on it is not very awesome. I have changed this out, but I just like the story so much. This ship is, I'm going to just say what I said in the previous, it's amazing. And the Masters of Air classics are pretty cool because they give you another paint scheme and they give you different weapons. Now, in most situations, just buying the base model is going to be all you need to do. Don't spend more money. Don't worry about what weapons you have. As you make money in the game, you could upgrade all of those things. But if you really like the skin of one of the Masters of Air, the only way you're going to get those, I believe, is by buying the variant. I'll let you read that if you want to. Now, I can't believe I said that was the last haul because we have this one. And this one has a couple of ships in it that make up the stealth category of the Aegis lineup. And that's not true because the Raven is a stealth fighter. The Saber is a stealth fighter. The Firebird's a stealth fighter. And those are all pretty cool. But this thing is amazing. Now, the Eclipse isn't going to be the best ship in the game because it's one of those that just hangs out far away, honing in on a target, staying out of sight, staying off the radar grid, and then fires its size nine torpedoes. And then whatever is in the distance will blow up. Now that, that is just different from what actually happens today with the point defense systems that are going on ships like the Polaris and the Phoenix. But it has been so much fun to do that in the past. And it is something that if you could buy in game, I would. Now, this is another ship that I believe needs a gold pass, but it has just been upgraded for modularity. This is the first modularity enabled ship in the game with modules like torpedo bays, which is what this is made for. Modules like an apartment or residence, modules like cargo or dropship. And this is where they're testing all that out. This is the F. Uh, actually, this is the B-17 or the B-29 Flying Fortress of World War II. And Lancaster Bomber, right? Because that was also a beautiful aircraft that had lots of guns coming out of all the different uh, windows and turrets that were around it. And this is a great ship to fly with a full complement, but it was built in a time when CIG just designed the exterior of a ship and then tried to shove everything inside of it. So. It just misses some of the amenities of some of the newer ships. Like when you take a starter ship from the beginning and you look at the recently introduced Intrepid, there's a totally different design language between them. And the attention to detail they give ships today is just so much more over the top than what we see in some of these older ships. And I hope gold passes upgrade textures, upgrade detail, and upgrade amenities inside. But right now, Again, this is one of those ships, and you're going to hear me saying it over and over again, because we do play inside of a multiplayer universe. This ship is best used, or only used, or only useful with multiplayer. So get friends together if you're going to get this ship. And I will say I love mine, but I don't always play with friends. So it just sits in the hangar. It's what I call hangar candy. I get to go and oogle at it, but I don't fly it as often as I want to. So this is the final, final haul. It's where the Vanguard is. And there are a few versions over here. There's a bomber version, a dropship version. There's an electronic warfare version and the long range fighter version. This is the P-63 Black Widow. This is the mainstay of your bounty hunting force as you get up to the pinnacle, the top layer of missions that you have to do there. It's either going to be this or the Eclipse, because the Eclipse is just nuts. But this ship, it only suffers from one thing. It was built early on. 
it's had a few updates, but again, you know, when you look at it, there are things that are just like, wow, but some of the amenities, some of the details, some of the language that's used in building the new ships is just not here. They've added some of that stuff. And I think maybe another pass would be good. But if they didn't get one, it's definitely better than in the all the other ones I said that about. I have one of these. I have the Warden. I, I'm not a big fan of the bomber version. I'm not a big fan of the dropship version yet because, you know, right now we're not really doing anything like that. And I, I have a Valkyrie Liberator, and that's one of the best dropships, right? But the Hoplite, this, this one... I don't know. It, it looks to me like it would be used by Marine Corps Recon or by Delta Force or one of those. Because you're, what are you doing? You're taking eight people into battle, six people into battle. So a platoon. So each one of these, you'd have to have hundreds of these for an invasion, right? I think this is more special forces. It's a great looking ship. And I'm going to say this right now. I used to be a huge fan of Aegis. I am not a hater of them. I just, it's just, most of their ships were built early on. So their ships are missing that detail, that attention to detail, that amenities, the new design languages that newer ships get. And when you look at something like the Ugly Duckling, the Intrepid, the interior of that is just so well thought out. And the gameplay in that for a new user and a new citizen is going to be so much better than some of the older ships that we have. But that does not negate how amazing some of these ships are. This is the one that I have, the heavy fighter, long range fighter. And it's just one of the most amazing ships in my fleet. And I do fly it often, especially when I'm doing bounty hunter missions on Batgirl. But it's not as nice as some of the other ones. Like my, my favorite heavy fighter right now is the F8 Lightning, <laughs> but this, this one, multiplayer, you need to have friends with you to man the turrets, and anytime you do anything with friends in this game, it's so much better, so much better. And again, I'm, I'm just looking through these, I'm not going to fly them, I'm not going to get really deep into what they're about. I want you to come here, rent it, fly it, and make your own opinion. So this is something that's happened in the game for many, many years and has ceased to an extent over the last couple of years. And that's the ship that comes out before any kind of gameplay is out for it. This is your electronic warfare ship. We don't have data running. We don't have high-end scanning. We don't have true stealth mechanics in the game at this point. And this ship really just doesn't have a place in your hangar, though the paint scheme looking like the Blue Angels and this huge cannon on it, <laughs> just make it something that is appealing and that you might want to buy. So just understand that if you look at this ship, yeah, it's going to hold its own in a fight, okay? But the true use of this ship is not in-game at this point. So have at it if you want. Um, I, I did not get this version of it, and I'm not against getting this version of it. I just look at it like, let's see what this gameplay is like down the road. Now, there's some obvious missing ships from the Aegis Dynamic IAE day, and this is one of them. This is the military version of the Idris, and it has a huge cannon on it. And this is one of those ships that Sounds like a great idea to purchase, and it would be for groups like TEST. But you need a complement of people to fly this thing that is enormous. And it is going to be an amazing ship, and it's going to be one of the ships that you will be on inside of Squadron 42. I have no hate for this ship at all. I have much love for it, but I just don't have a place in my fleet for it. And my org owns many of them. It is a great ship. This next one is going to be something that someone's going to need to fly in every fleet. This is the supply ship. Refuel, rearm, repair, whatever you want it to do. This is the mainstay of the support fleet. And this is the Vulcan. This is something that I think 
there's going to have to be a number of in anybody's large fleet, especially when you're out doing fleet actions. Or if we ever get the Tiber system, um, maybe it would be needed greatly when we actually get into Operation Pitchfork. But right now, I, I don't know how important this ship is. Maybe it's going to be super important as we move into Pyro. We'll see. And this is the Nautilus, which is... I don't know. I, I think it's kind of cool. It looks like a fish. Those two protrusions on the underside and the top side are for laying mines. Mines have been a part of all of Chris Roberts' games. So I know how they work in his other games. I just don't know how they're going to work here or how effective this ship is going to be. Are there going to be mine sweeper ships, not just mine laying ships? And I know they say this does both, kind of, sort of. Are you going to have smaller ships going out ahead of the fleet and blowing up mines? No idea. I'm not going to talk too much about these last two Ravens because they came out at a time when I wasn't very involved with Star Citizen, but I know this one is the racer. And it's sleek, it's fast, and I haven't raced in a while, so I don't know if it's still the same. It looks kind of wide. I, I wonder if this is more for some of the newer race tracks that they're putting together. I'm going to have to check that out again, but this one is a nice looking ship. And again, any saber is always going to be beautiful. And the last one, as we come around the nose over here, we're going to skip back to the beginning of my trek down here is the Firebird. I think this is more of a stealth ship and it has a heavy duty loadout from what it looks like. And I did rent this one and I tried to fly it, but desync was ridiculous. I couldn't hit anything, and all I have to say is, this is pretty awesome. Um, I'll, I'll let you look around the ship as I close out, because I want to say goodbye to you all today. I work a lot during the holiday. I am putting in 10-hour days and driving an hour and a half in each direction now, so putting these videos together really does take a lot of my time that I have to sleep, and if you start to hear me get a little bit exhausted over the next couple of days, I apologize. Anyway, I am back. That's all I want to say. And with the next days of IAE, they might come a little bit later, but I'm going to try to do a couple of videos in between of some specific ships that I think anybody new coming into the game should take a look at. And with that said, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for watching my videos. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking in the button in the upper left. You can support the channel by going to Patreon by clicking the button in the upper right. On the left, you'll see my latest video, and on the right, you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you will like.